One of the most exciting new features of Illustrator CS5 is a new bristle brush. This isn't a new tool per se, but rather it's a new type of brush that we'll see as a new option in the brushes dialog. The cool thing about these new brushes is their ability to simulate natural media such as oils, acrylics, and even watercolors, giving us a chance to do something that we've never really been able to do in Illustrator until now, and that is to actually paint with vectors. Let me show you what I mean. Now on this untitled document that I have open, I'm going to be laying down a few of these bristle brushes. In order to do so, I'm going to make sure that the brush tool is selected, that's very important. And then I'm also going to make sure that the brushes panel is available to me. So I'm just going to tear it out here and have it floating around the canvas. And I can see all the different types of brushes that uh, are available immediately as soon as you create a new document in Illustrator. Now I want to create my own bristle brush, although I can see that I have one right here. And I'm going to do so by simply clicking on the new brush icon at the bottom of the panel. Notice here that we have different types of brushes that we can actually be creating. For example, from art brushes to pattern brushes, scatter brushes, etc. But the new bristle brush also is available right here. This is where the new feature actually resides. So I'm just going to choose it. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to be bringing into display the bristle brush options. I can do this because I have multiple displays and therefore this sucker popped up in the wrong display. Now here I can name it. And also the probably the most important thing I'll be tweaking around in this brush options dialog is the shape of the brush. Now if we inspect it real quick we can see that we basically have two categories of brushes that we can that we can create. We have a round brush and we have a flat, flat brush. If you want to do fine detailed work you probably want to use the round point brush. If you want to fill large areas with color you probably want to use either the round fan or the flat fan. For this demo I'm going to use a round fan. We also have a few options here, as a matter of fact, more than a few options available to us, from the size to the opacity. I'm just going to leave it so, I'm going to say OK, and here we can see the new brush that we've just created. We can also see, as I start moving the cursor around the canvas, that the brush tip is in preview. Not only am I able to see the tip, but I can also see how Illustrator is responding to the movements of the stylus pen I'm using. Yes, that is also an important point. You will only see the preview if you're using one of the Wacom tablets. If you're not using it, then you'll just see the brush icon. Now, as I start laying color, I'm just going to click and drag. You can see that Illustrator not only lays down the stroke, but also tries to blend the colors together. Now that, my friends, is amazing. Now let's take a look at how we can actually use this feature in an illustration. I'm just going to use this one here, move the brushes out of the way, and we can see in this uh, Deprisa Demo.ai, I'm using the face color layer. It's actually visible, everything else is locked down, and I have a layer 16 here on top, which is where I'm going to be drawing the strokes. Now I also have, have uh, selected the face object and have uh, activated the new drawing mode draw inside. Okay, so therefore everything that we draw here will be drawn inside the shape. Okay, so far so good. Let's start doing some painting. And uh, to do that, I'm going to make sure that the brushes library for the bristle brush is activated. Now I can do that using of course the brushes panel picking a library from the panel and we see the category for bristle brush. We have the bristle brush library. I'm going to select it and here it is my friends. We have all the brushes that we can even dream of. It's like going to a store, an art store, and saying hey give me all the brushes you have. So here we have them here and now I'm just going to pick one of these nice uh, three millimeter fan brushes. Okay, you can see the preview right there. Another thing that I need to do is, of course, pick the color that I'm going to be using for the, the, uh, for the brush. Now, the color will be drawn or will be taken from the stroke here in the panel. 
So therefore, if we want to choose a color, I need to make sure that the stroke is in focus. Of course, the fill will be none because the fill will not be affecting the strokes or the brushes that we start uh, using in Illustrator. So I want to make sure that the stroke is in focus. I want to choose a nice color. In order to do so, I'm going to choose the eyedropper. And notice that we've laid down uh, many gradients and colors here in the illustration already. So if I just click here with the eyedropper, I'm just going to be choosing the gradient. Now, that's not what I want. So I'm just going to make sure that I use the shift key in the keyboard and click. And now I can pick up any color within the gradient. Now, of course, I want to make sure the fill is at none and the stroke is in focus. And now I want to choose my nice brush here. Of course, I need to make sure that the brush tool is selected. Make sure that this brush is selected, which is actually, it actually is, it should be highlighted here, but anyway. And now when I start painting, notice what happens. Illustrator starts to blend the paint with whatever color is already laid down. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm, now I'm going to pick a uh, lighter color. And I'm going to make sure I pick one of these colors with shift, click, and now I have this one. Notice that I can use the color guide to make sure that I have available all the, sorry, right here, all the monochromatic colors. I like to use this one right here because not only will I see the color, but I also see the shades and tints of that color. So that will make me uh, a little more efficient in order to choose, for example, a higher tint color here. Choose the brush tool. And now we can start painting. And notice how Illustrator is trying to blend the colors together. Now, the cool thing about this also is that if we want to lower the opacity of the brush and the color, we can do so, of course, using the control panel here on top. We can see that, that we have controls for the opacity and even the size. But we can also do this a little bit more organically. And we can do that by using the keyboards, uh, the keyboard and the bracket keys, just as we can in, in Photoshop. So in order to, for example, reduce the size of the brush, I'm going to use the left bracket key. I'm going to hit it one, one time, and now I'm going to pick a stronger color here, a darker color, and I'm going to start painting on top here. In order, oops, I'm going to undo that one. In order to lower the opacity of the brush, I can also use the keyboard. I can use the numbers from one to nine to hit, for example, five for 50%, and now I'm only using 50% of that color one for 10% of the color. And now you can see how we can start blending the colors together. Man, like if we were using Painter or Photoshop or something like that. And zero will take me to 100% opacity, which is not what I want at all. So when you combine these brushes with all the other cool new features of Illustrator, you'll be able to take your artwork and designs to a whole new level.